Garth, how's the digging going? It's going well, Tanya. And how big is the pond? How big have you dug? Okay, the pond is one and a half metres by length, 700 wide and about 500 deep. Okay, so we could actually build this as big as we want, or as challenging as anyone would want to have it. Any size you, you want, really. Okay, right. So we're going with an average size pond. What we now need to do is we need to go and make the mixture for getting this whole thing started. So let's go and mix that cement. Garth, we've got all our bits together. Most importantly, we've got this plank because this is where we're going to be mixing all the cement. What mixture are we using today? We're going to use a, a five part sand to one part of cement uh, for this mixture. Okay. And one pocket of cement should be enough to do our pond? It should be, yes, Tanya. Fantastic. Okay. Well, let's get mixing. What's first? We're going to lay down the, the river sand first and then we'll sprinkle the, the cement over. Okay. Yes, looking stuff. Okay, Garth, give me the magic ingredient. All right, folks, this stuff here is the most important stuff that you're gonna need besides your cement and your coarse river sand. And this is a seeker product and it's a waterproofing product. Now, one of these bags goes into one pocket of cement. And all you've gotta do is just sprinkle it on and mix it in well into your dry ingredients, like baking a cake. This is like the baking powder, the really, really important part. So mix it in, and that you just mix thoroughly into your mixture. So I'm gonna put half an hour, we're gonna mix it in, and then I'm gonna add the other half, and that is your waterproofing agent. If you do not have that, well then your pond is going to leak. Gosh, it is right that it's one bag to one pot this mix. Right, take a look at the mixture now. The Amgani sand and the cement, you can't even see the difference. It's all mixed into a really cool, friable mixture. Now what we're gonna do is add the moisture and the water. Now this is so important that you don't add too much because at the end of the day, we want it to almost be like a putu mixture, like a kind of stiff porridge where we're gonna be packing it into the side. So I'm gonna add bits of water, Garth, bit by bit. Garth, what's the mixture like? Now we're ready, Tanya. Okay, take a look at that. If you make a ball, it's not going to fall apart. This is perfect. Good enough for packing. Let's Three. do it. Okay, Garth, what's up? Right, first thing we're gonna do is pour them again in here. Okay. The next step is that we're gonna start compacting these walls. And we'll start from the bottom and work up, and then from the front to the back. Okay, and it's quite a simple process? It should be quite a simple process. Okay, yeah. let's give it a bash. Start packing your cement directly against the sand. There's no need to lay down plastic sheeting, as the waterproofing additive will be sufficient. Make sure it's as evenly and tightly packed as possible to remove any air pockets and pack the cement to a thickness of around 5 cm. Mix small batches of cement at a time and if necessary, mix more as you go along using the same cement and river sand ratio. The plastering process should take you about 2 to 3 hours.
Garth, it looks like you're almost ready for the wire basket. Yes, I am, Tanya. Okay, now, folks, what we've got here is we've taken some four millimeter galvanized wire, and all we've done is we've created a little basket by cutting strips of it that go from either end to create a mesh, and then to hold it together, just a thinner bit of wire. And that is going to sit inside it. Now, this is the reinforcing. So that, we work into the pond just like that. So what's happening now is that the reinforced wire that we have is literally going to be sandwiched between the other layer of mixture, which is, remember, the river sand together with the cement that's going to go into here and, of course, the seacolite. Your reinforcing must always go in between the two layers. It'll do nothing if placed at the bottom against the sand. If necessary, secure the wire to the walls of the pond using 10 centimeter long U-shaped nails. Right, Garth, the wire looks like it's all in place. Yes, it's in place, Tanya. Stuck nicely into the concrete. Now we're just going to add the second layer and make our sandwich. That's right. Pack another five centimeters of cement on top of the reinforcing for a total thickness of about 10 centimeters, making sure that none of the wire protrudes through the cement. We finished packing in all the cement into the pond, and now all we've got to do is be a little bit patient and allow it to dry. Now that we're in winter, there's no chance of rain, so we're just simply going to leave it and leave it for about a week. Because remember, the longer you leave concrete, the harder it gets and the better it cures, and the curing time is what's important. All that's left to do after that, dress it up, finish the edges, plant it up, and we're going to reveal to you the most amazing pond in less than a week. When you're finished, leave to cure for as long as possible, a week minimum, occasionally dampening the mixture to ensure a slow, even and strong cure. If any small cracks do appear, then fill them immediately using the same mixture. So the pond is done, filled up with water, and we've just done the finishing touches. We've used some slate to put around the edge so that it hides where the concrete met the soil. And then just to finish it off, a few pebbles used in between. And besides that, we planted it up with some awesome plants. We've got some beautiful restios in the background here. Then they're going to get about a meter and a half tall and really soften this area. Grasses or any plant that has a grass-like foliage always do incredibly well around water features just to soften it and add a bit of difference and texture and of course a few dietes just behind me which is the wild iris as well just to soften the area and finally I've planted in some acorus into a pot now we planted these directly in three of them been put into the one what I've done is I've used some pebbles just around it soaked it in a bucket of water to make sure that all the excess soil will have removed itself and then we're gonna pop it into the pond which will, it will just love growing. Now, a chorus is actually part of the Eremili family, so it loves growing in water, and it's just going to do fantastically well. We're gonna pop him in here. There we go, watch it suck up the water, and there we go, and I've got a dwarf papyrus just in the front, and at the end of the day, I think we've got a pretty cool pond. Built in a week, left to cure, 
finish it off with the plants that will soften and work. Always remember the light conditions, whether your pond is in the sun or the shade. We put a pump in the centre just to give a bit of movement to the water, which will keep it aerated, and the rest I'm just going to leave up to nature. So there you have it. It's a pond in a week. It was really easy to do. I hope you'll build your own pond in your garden and enjoy it as much as my Chloe and Charlie seem to be enjoying it. <laughs> Till next week, do take care and happy gardening. Thank you.